Hi, welcome back to the Historic Nerd. Today we're going to talk about Electronic Arts. Electronic Arts is a company that started from humble beginnings and has now grown to become one of the world's largest third-party publishers of software, with a yearly revenue exceeding four billion dollars. That's like nine zeros. In 1982, Trip Hawkins left his position at Apple Computers to start EA Games. Hawkins' idea was to create a game company with a special interest on the designers of the games, um, not just the publicity of the games themselves. Most notably, Trip Hawkins considered the game industry an emerging art form, uh, thus electronic arts. In 1982, many considered the video games to be just a passing Trip, fad, uh, but Trip Hawkins was you know, determined to prove them wrong. And people aren't quite as interested. Are computer games uh, here to stay, or is it a fad? I think computer games are fundamentally different from video games, mainly because computer technology in the home can be extended and become a much broader uh, base of technology. Uh, just as an example, all of these programs that we're talking about here, uh, they come on floppy disks, and each one of these holds much more memory than can be held in the memory of a coin-operated arcade game. And it really is, it, it becomes a, uh, a question of the program size when you finally want to know how good a program can I have and how much can I do with it and how long will it take before I'm bored with it or I've exhausted the educational value. And I can get, uh, oh, something like three or four times more program on here than I can fit into the memory of a, of a coin-operated game. The story of EA's rise sounds very similar to that of Activision. However, EA's business model was completely different. It would act as an independent publisher and would not run an internal studio. The company would instead seek out talent to distribute their work. EA managed this model by working directly with retailers. Extraordinary graphics, exciting sound, and incredibly realistic action. However, in 1987, EA started to get an inch of its own and released Skate or Die. In 1990, EA wanted to join Sega in releasing games for the new console, but didn't really care for Sega's license fees, and instead deciding to manufacture their own cartridges without Sega's consent. After a few rather angry legal threats from Sega, EA and Sega worked out a negotiated deal, although EA still opted to continue using its own oddly shaped cartridges. In 1991, EA Games struck a gold mine by combining celebrity license with sports titles effectively allowing EA to release the same game year after year with relatively minor changes. The franchise we all know today as Madden was born. Trip Hawkins left EA in 1991 to follow a new idea he had had that would later be known as a 3DO. We can't always be winners. Hawkins admitted he was more a game developer than he was a businessman, and left the company in the very capable hands of Larry Posh. Larry, having a more aggressive management style and business plan, began the massive acquisition business model that we all know from EA today. EA bought distinctive software that later became SSX, NBA Live Studios, and EA Canada. A year later, in 1992, Origin was purchased and placed under the watchful eye of Don Matrix. Matrix put Origin under strict rules of operations. Origin and Matrix owned EA Canada shared resources with unequal treatment. Matrix started enforcing EA's policy of big blockbuster titles over small projects with reasonable profit margins. The blockbuster projects were held to impossible timelines that strained the relationship between EA and Origin. In 1995, EA bought Bullfrog, then Manly and Associates in 1996, followed by Maxis in 1997. Then Westwood and Tiburon in 1998, followed by Kissimmee in 1999, DreamWorks Studio in 2000, and they also closed Bullfrog by 2001, and then followed up by purchasing Sega Sports and Studio Black in 2002. Studio 33 and PC Master's new fix were purchased in 2003, and then later purchasing Jammed Out Mobile, Mythic, and Dice in 2006. EA at this point has become something more like the board collective than a corporation, being drawn to a game studio with a successful game franchise, and then acquiring the studio, forcing the staff to make sequel after sequel until the staff burns out or the game doesn't do very well, and then the studio is closed or harvested for talent, and then subsequently shrunk. Only Maxis has been allowed some autonomy within EA. It's been called the jewel in EA's crown. EA by 2007 seems to have abandoned all of its core values and principles in favor of a rapid growth model that favors profit no matter what the cost. EA Games has won worst company in America two years in a row, beating out Citigroup and Comcast. EA, unfortunately, has become more about the business of game making as opposed to the art of telling a compelling story. And in many ways, they have lost sight of what was originally important when the company was founded, the creators of the games. 
and the people that would ultimately play it. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode.